This video is brought to you by Rosetta Stone. We have crammed the last two weeks of exploring the incredible Amalfi Coast of Italy into one video to create the ultimate guide on everything that you need to know to make your trip an unforgettable experience. From the most fascinating historical sites that you will find to the best places to eat and drink along the coast and of course the best place to stay if you want to get the most from your Amalfi trip without breaking the bank. If you're new around here and want to see more of our European adventure then make sure you hit that subscribe button but for now let's get back to seeing what the Amalfi Coast has to offer. Hi, we are Gemma and Campbell and until two weeks ago we were living full time in our home on wheels Ellie the Eldest. For the last two weeks we have been exploring Europe and soaking up the summer sun of Greece and now the Amalfi Coast in Italy. Join us for more European travels, some useful tips for your own adventures and of course a whole lot of this along the way. It is really not looking good to be honest. Nice. Boom. We're going up in the world baby. <laughs> So good morning everyone from beautiful Maiore on the Italian coast down in Amalfi region. It has just turned 7 o'clock and the sun has risen over the city of Maiore and it is just looking so, so beautiful. Like look at this view we've got from a balcony, it is stunning. Hello. We've been awake from about 4am this morning because we were actually woken up by something that, looking at the sky right now, you would never expect. But it was this like torrential thunderstorm. I've never seen anything like it. I thought it was maybe a volcano erupting because it was just all these flashes of light and all of a sudden there are car alarms going off and everything. And it sounds over dramatic, but I definitely got a fright. During our stay in Amalfi, we chose to stay in the small town of Maori along the Amalfi coast. Now the reason for this is because it is so much cheaper than staying in the likes of Amalfi or Positano and that is reflected even through the prices of food. We have had 4 euro pizzas, 5 euro 50 half litres of wine. The accommodation has cost us 809 euros for 10 nights. It's also like really easy to get to these popular places by ferry from the Maori Harbour which is what we're going to be doing today. First thing first though we're going to go and get some breakfast. So although this may make you think that these areas are less popular and there's no atmosphere or vibe to them, there still is, there's still a really nice sort of bustling atmosphere but it's just not as busy as the likes of Amalfi and Positano and it means that you can actually get a table to sit down somewhere and you don't have to kind of look ahead or plan what you're doing because you'll always find a table somewhere. Yum! Now this place does some really, really good food on the menu. What was it? Pancakes, waffles, or all, all kind of like fancy, like Kinder Bueno waffles, which I'm not gonna lie, definitely tickled my fancy, but this looks just as good. And oh, it's warm. Mm. That is a precious thing, ever. Yeah, if you guys haven't noticed a recurring theme on these Europe trips, it's um, we are obsessed with pizza, croissants, and I'm obsessed with coffee. So you'll be seeing a lot of that in this trip. Now of course one of the main things that the Amalfi Coast in Italy is actually famous for is its fresh produce of lemons. And one of the main things that they actually produce from the lemons is a little thing called lemon cello. Oh right, and I've gone and spilt it over my hands already and I've not even taken a sip yet. Now funny story, the last time we actually came to the Amalfi Coast, we didn't realise what limoncello was, but we knew that it was a sort of traditional thing here. So we came to a cafe at about 9am and said, oh we want some limoncello. And they said, are you sure? Like really early. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like we want to give it a shot. They literally brought us shots of limoncello at 9am in the morning. But it was really tasty, so here we are, again, in the morning. Decided to go for a little limoncello because we missed the first ferry. It's now 11 a.m. I think it's acceptable to have a sip of limoncello. Yeah, so anyone else is not entirely sure what limoncello is, it's basically the kind of spirit that they actually distill from the lemon. I think it's from the grind and it's a very, very strong, kind of sweet spirit that basically tastes of lemon. It smells very lemony and kind of mixed with vodka. It's like a lemony vodka. Ooh, it's quite nice. It's almost like Sambuca actually more than vodka. It's not even like we've just got like a little small bit of it. They have literally given us like a full it's glass. Yeah. I'll play my Three euros. What each. do you think? Very strong, but I like the flavour. Oh, it's just gonna take me a long time to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> and for all you regular viewers, you will recognise Gemma's face just there as their whiskey tasting face. So yeah, she's just not made for shots apparently. <laughs> I'm not much better. Oh, that's strong. <laughs> And funny story, the reason we're actually having it in a takeaway espresso cup is because after the storm last night, basically all of the tents that usually line the seafront where you can sit and enjoy the view, they've all blown down. 
So before we head out and actually start exploring around the Amalfi Coast, we need to do one thing, which is send these postcards, which we actually bought last week when we were in Greece. We still haven't had a chance to send them yet. We do, however, actually still need to find a post office, but that gives us a perfect opportunity to practice the skills that we've been learning with the sponsor of today's video, Rosetta Stone. Now, when it comes to learning languages in the past, I have always found it really difficult, but from spending a lot of time in Italy over the years, I really love the Italian language. So I really wanted to make it my mission to learn some of the language on this trip. For the last month we have been using the Rosetta Stone app to learn the basics of the language, the pronunciations and how to get around the city. The app actually makes it really easy to immerse yourself in the Italian language and not only read and listen to the language but speak the language as well for yourself. So that just means it is now time to put our Italian skills to the test and see how good they really are. So ciao, buongiorno. Buongiorno. Mi potete aiutare? Certo. Se c'è un ufficio postale qui vicino? Si. Si. Scendi la scala, si. scala si. attraversi, di fronte al palazzo c'è l'ufficio postale. I'll say it's literally just over there. Yeah. Okay. Ah, ciao. Okay. Okay. Grazie mille. Prego, ciao, prego. Ciao. Well, that actually went a lot better than I expected. I'm just glad I could practice the pronunciation before I went and did that because I don't think anyone would have actually been able to understand me otherwise. To be honest, Rosetta Stone has been such a great addition to our daily schedule. And if you guys want to challenge yourself and learn a new language this summer, maybe for your summer holiday, or maybe you just want to learn a different language, we can highly recommend this app. Make a long-term investment in yourself this summer and click the link down in the description box below for our exclusive discount discount code which will give you 50% off a lifetime subscription to Rosetta Stone. It usually costs £350 but with our link you'll get it for just £175. Benissimo! Now the last time we visited the Amalfi Coast we used the ferry service to get between each of the towns along the coast but there is also a public bus service. The public bus is an incredibly affordable option for getting around the Amalfi Coast, costing as little as €2 Euros for a 30 minute journey. Tickets can be bought from the corner shops or by using the Unico app which we would recommend as you can also use it to plan your route as well. The bus route is very different from the boat route along the coast, mainly due to the narrow and winding roads creating quite a nail-biting experience. However, the views on the left for the entire journey are absolutely breathtaking. Okay, well that was absolutely mental. I know that we have narrow roads up in Scotland and the Highlands, but that is nothing compared to what they have here on the Melfi Coast and it is so much busier. I would not want to be a bus driver up in this part of the world. So one thing that I'm feeling really striking about Amalfi is just how pretty all of the buildings are. It's such like a nice place to actually just come and have a little wander around. It is, however, noticeably a lot busier than Maori. I guess that's just because it's called Amalfi and when you come to the Amalfi Coast, you've got to come to the town called Amalfi. And of course, when you are in Amalfi, you will see lemons everywhere. So you need to try the lemon sorbet and here they do it a little bit differently. Okay, how cool is this? They only have lemon sorbet, but they actually serve it in a proper lemon. This is melting rapidly and again, running all down my arms. Just as well, I'm wearing a yellow dress today. Everything lemon is spilling on me. It looks unreal. Mmm, this costs seven euros, which to be fair, they have put a lot into it. So I'd say it's actually better value than getting an ice cream, which for a single scoop was three euros. Oh, wow, that how is good so is that? good. So refreshing. Even the hand sinks in the mouth here are fancy. Look at this. And so to finish off our day out in Amalfi, we've decided to catch a pretty sketchy bus ride up to the very top of the hill, up to a tiny little town called Ravello. But how good are those views, babe? Honestly, I would say some of the best I've ever, ever seen. Like this whole coastline just blows my mind how there's just houses built hanging on the edge of these cliffs. And then even when we were coming up the winding road up to get to Ravello, even when you look deep down kind of into the sort of valley area, it's just little houses. And then there's like up the cliff and then there's just more houses. Blows my mind. I love it here. I mean, yeah, I think the views around the Amalfi coastline are pretty spectacular, but this is probably the best one so far, yeah. I think, up here. Just like looking down over the bay, because you can actually see the entire coastline from one place. The villa's definitely a little special place, I think. Absolutely, I love it here. One thing this town is, however, is a giant maze. I found a little place on Google Maps we're trying to go for to for dinner, and it's literally just taking us down all these tiny little winding alleys with a million sets of stairs. 
which is the last thing I need when I'm absolutely starving. Sweating. You're burning that pizza off before you even eat it. I know, this dress has like two layers to it and I wore it because I thought, oh, it's a wee bit cooler tonight. I feel like I'm sweating. It's because we took the wrong turn as well, so we were away the wrong way up the stairs and then come all the way back down. <laughs> we're here. What a view this place is going to have. I wonder how this night will be. The apple does not fall, fall from now unfortunately because we didn't book, we don't get to sit in the front row seats to the view but this is a pretty good view I'd say anyway. So we've stopped into a place just down the road from Ravello and it's called La Terrezza de Giuliano and because it's just outside of the town itself it's a little bit cheaper. I can actually get a pretty fancy pizza for 12 euros um, because I feel like all I've eaten this holiday is pizza so far so I don't really want another margarita. Oh my Goodness. I guess that's just one of the perks of ordering pizzas as well, is that they end up coming in about five minutes. What did you get? Ooh, I think it was called the Primera. Yeah, I felt like I just needed something a bit more green, to be honest. And instead of just going for a lettuce, tomato and cucumber salad, just get a bit of salad on the pizza. That looks really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, cheese heaven. So much cheese on that, and it's like perfectly cooked as well. I don't think I'll ever get bored of pizza. Good morning everyone, we're up bright and early today and I am very excited for where we're actually going to. It's one of the sites I've been looking forward to actually heading to the most on the Amalfi Coast. But to get there, we need to get two buses. Okay, so that is one bus down and it cost us two euros to get from Maiori to Salerno. So the spot that we are actually going to today is of course the UNESCO World Heritage Site that is the Pompeii Archaeological Dig. It's somewhere that I've actually been very excited about to visit since I was probably a bit younger. And I think the main reason for that is because, as you guys know, we absolutely love visiting castle ruins when we're in Scotland. And that's because it kind of gives you a good perspective of what life was actually like back in those days. Now, I've read online that the Pompeii ruins, of course, are so well preserved that you can see things such as even where people used to sit and have their dinner and even the baths that they used to take. So it's quite an immersive experience. Before we get there, however, we've still got another one hour plus journey. So that felt like an extremely long bus ride first thing in the morning, but we made it, we're here, and I have to say it is a lot busier than I thought it would be when it opened at 9am this morning. It is absolutely heaving in here, and I can only imagine it's going to get more busy throughout the day. But I don't really know what to expect from here, I don't really know an awful lot about it, so we've gone and got ourselves some audio guides, and I'm actually really looking forward to learning and finding out a bit more about Pompey. I think one thing that has really blown my mind so far is just how perfectly preserved so much of it is, like down to the finest little details, such as on the Roman roads themselves, which were used on the original city of Pompeii. They've even still got the tracks that the old Roman kind of carriages and the horse and carts used to actually create when they wore the stones away. I just think that's absolutely fascinating. And so for those of you that aren't familiar with Pompeii, this used to be a bustling, thriving city where people went about their day-to-day -day life until one day in 79 AD where that big volcano decided to erupt and completely covered the city in volcanic rock. And that is exactly how it actually stayed for the next 1700 years until finally a Spanish surveying engineer came all the way over here by order of the Spanish king in search of treasure and discovered Pompeii exactly as it was that day of the eruption. But yeah, just to be here in Italy, walking around 2000 years of history, is very cool. It's gonna be a good day. I have had a really good and interesting morning. I guess visiting places like this though always leaves you with a bit of mixed emotions. Like you've kind of got the heartache for the place that it once was, this beautiful thriving city. But I guess it's now still thriving because millions of people visit Pompeii every year and we get to come here and see what it was like. And it is, it's absolutely fascinating. Like I've, I've been left sort of speechless at some of the sites that we have seen. It's just unbelievable. I guess also a couple of tips if you do want to visit this place for yourself is we did the audio guide tour, which you get a little phone and it tells you about the places. I wouldn't really recommend it because I thought it was going to be more of a guided tour. It would take you in an order around the place. Whereas you're very much left to your own devices to choose where you want to wander to. So I didn't think it was great value. Also make sure you bring a water bottle. There's plenty of water fountains all over the place and there's not a lot of shade so you will get very warm. Be prepared to do a lot of walking. My legs are very tired 
and I think it's time for lunch. And so we've come about half an hour down south of Pompeii to Sorrento because you can't come to the Malfi Coast and not visit the town of Sorrento. One place that we actually wanted to come and visit was this place for lunch just because I had heard about the stunning views that you can get from the cafe. My cousin got married here a few years back and unfortunately we couldn't actually make the wedding so it's only fair that we actually get to come and enjoy ourselves, isn't it? It is, however, extortion-like. So expensive. I said it's eight euros for a Coke Zero. That's insane. Wow. I'll never think two euro fifty is expensive again. What have we gone for? Um, the cheapest option on the menu, which I think was still 12, 12, 12 euros. It's four where we're staying. It's like three times the price. The birds here do not care. They almost knocked over my pearl spritz. That little bird literally just jumped in that girl's dinner and picked something out and he's, he's sitting on the floor eating it. That bit of pasta just cost out maybe three euros. Oh, okay, so just outside of Positano, maybe around a 10-15 minute walk, there is a fruit stall overlooking that gorgeous view. And he serves loads of different fruit and also serves fruit juice. Now, I've had one sip of this orange juice and oh my goodness, who needs to go to a supermarket? That is the freshest thing ever and it tastes so good. The oranges are the sweetest thing ever, honestly, taste it. It is very, very oh, hot, no very hot. I mean, it's not cool, it's not that cool. Ooh. Wow, that's so tasty. See, if that was chilled, that would be exactly what I need right now. So the town of Positano itself is probably one of the most well-known towns along the Amalfi Coast, and it has got a certain number of stereotypes, if you have ever heard of it. The first is, of course, like many other towns in the Amalfi Coast, just the insane number of stairs that you're going to need to navigate around Positano. The second is that it is very, very expensive. Turn and go the other way. How much is it? Like £24 for a main course. And the third is basically just how insanely busy it is everywhere you go. <sighs> yeah. Oh, hey. And so I guess that just brings us back to the question of is it all actually worth the hype? In my opinion, undoubtedly. I absolutely love it here. We've been here for 10 days now and it's been like such an incredible experience. I'm not usually one for the crowded beaches and like the overpriced places and everything like that, but to be honest, it is just absolutely worth it. The place is insane. Like the, the houses on the cliffs just oh. blow my mind every single time I see them. Yeah, I think it's one of our favourite places. And although we had already been before, we decided to come back. And I think, yeah, again, we've already been talking about the next time that we're going to come back here. Like we just absolutely. I can't get Love enough it. of it. I know. It's, it's incredible. And I think just this whole Europe trip that we've gone on has just been so much fun because, like we said last time, it's just been the first time we've been actually been able to leave Scotland for a long time and it's been so much fun just seeing new cultures, trying new food, trying the same food over and over again <laughs> in terms of pizza, but just speaking different languages and exploring again, it's so much fun. And that brings us on nicely to an exciting announcement that we have started to look into hosting our own group trip. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Yes, yeah, so we really, really want to bring you guys on an adventure with us. And we've been looking into different ideas. We've created a Google document and we'd love to hear what country you would like to visit. And if you would like to come with us, we'd really appreciate if you would complete the document. And yeah, we're really buzzing about it. I can't wait. When's it going to be? Hopefully around next springtime we're looking at at the moment. But sadly, we are leaving the Amalfi Coast tomorrow. We're going somewhere very exciting though. And it's been on my bucket list for a long time. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the gang. And if you did like this video and you found it useful, and if we've inspired you to come to Amalfi, give it a big thumbs up because it just lets us know that we're doing the right thing and that you want to see more videos just like this one. And on a final note as well, guys, make sure you check out that Rosetta Stone exclusive discount we've got for half price on a lifetime membership if you want to start learning a language before your next trip. And as always, we'll see you again in the next one. See ya.